the Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom, Jeremy Hunt. Please, Jeremy. Across the world, 99 journalists were killed last year, more than twice as many as a decade earlier, and another 348 were locked up by governments. Few perpetrators of these crimes are ever held to account. Indeed, after 11 years, of the 46 journalists who suffered violent deaths in 2008, only eight cases have been resolved. Which is why our conference and this global campaign are so important. Now, powerful people value their reputations. So the sunlight of transparency is the greatest deterrent to wrongdoing. I'm a politician, and like many members of my profession, I don't always enjoy reading what the media says about me. Indeed, a politician who stands up for journalists might occasionally feel like a turkey voting for Christmas. And of course, I need to say, maybe my only chance, newspapers also make mistakes. Journalists are not immune from the temptations of hyperbole or excess. But for those of us who are sometimes on the receiving end of criticism, we should also reflect on the wisdom of Nelson Mandela when he said, the media are a mirror through which we see ourselves and others perceive us. Warts, blemishes and all. Just to briefly answer your question, um, yes, there are always limits to press freedom on matters of national security, but they're not covered by the leak of these particular diplomatic telegrams. And I deplore those leaks because, as Foreign Secretary, I need to get confidential correspondence from my ambassadors all around the world. Uh, but I defend to the hilt the right of the press to publish them if they receive them, because that is what you have to do to do your job. Boris can speak for himself, and he's very capable of doing that. Um, I will speak for myself. I think it is absolutely essential that uh, when our diplomats do their job all over the world, and in this case, Sir Kim Darrick was a very experienced dip diplomat, uh, we defend them because we have the third largest diplomatic network after the United States and China, and it is incredibly important both for the United Kingdom and for the defense of the values that the United Kingdom supports like press freedom. And so in this situation, uh, we had a fine diplomat who was just doing what he should have been doing, giving a frank assessment, a personal assessment of the political situation in the country that he was posted. And that's why I defended him and I think we all should. Um, on your second question, I wouldn't use the language President Trump used, and I wouldn't agree with it. And I think we have to remember whatever the political battles that we face in countries where we are used to press freedom, and it's part of our, uh, our daily lives, and we've, we've never known anything else, we have to remember uh, that those, what we say can have an impact in other countries where they can't take press freedom for granted. And that's why this conference is so important because for the first time, we are flying the flag for that awkward tension between politicians and journalists where uh, we have to, uh, we have that symbiotic relationship where we each make the other one's life difficult, but actually what we end up with is not just freer, but stronger societies.